Welcome back to Next Gen Investing. Under 30 time, George Tillis is here, senior markets correspondent for the network. Ion Q on your mind here, George. Stock down about 10%. I got to be honest, this is not one that's on my radar. So floor is yours, my friend. What's going on? Well, I mean, obviously, there's a, a lot going on with technology. I mean, first off, uh, but there's some challenges with uh, premier technologies like, you know, AI chips from NVIDIA uh, with that stock trading the downside, at least earlier today. But there's the whole aspect of what's next in terms of the technology stacks. Quantum computing uh, is still out there in the backdrop. And we know that the, we've seen a lot of these names perform exceptionally well. Uh, particularly in the last six months or so, but there has been some pullback uh, in some of these names. And IonQ is one of these quantum computing names uh, that's out there that's had a significant pullback in the past, you know, six weeks or so, as there's sort of a market correction and a high beta correction. Now, uh, the stock is down, you know, give or take around 10% right now. And they did report earnings and sales yesterday afternoon. And what they ended up doing is, is the uh, they actually reported a what, much worse than expected earnings per share number at around 93 cents of a loss. Uh, that was estimated to be around 25 cents of a loss, which was still expected to be a little bit worse than last year, where they lost around 20 cents a share. Now, if you look at the top line sales, uh, they actually bested the uh, estimates, but they were higher by almost double, uh, $11.7 million versus $6.1 million for the same quarter last year. So obviously, this company has been growing its sales. Uh, but the structural challenge, I think, with the all, all these quantum computing names, uh, which is essentially, uh, you know, questions are, is this technology largely experimental or effectively, you know, currently impractical? And that's something we have to consider in the context of the technology stack right now. And uh, these stocks have made a tremendous run, there's no doubt. Uh, this name, I believe, is still higher by over 150 percent, irrespective of the uh, nearly 50% pullback uh, in the past, uh, you know, six weeks or so, uh, but the company's still, you know, losing money, and that's something we have to consider because if you look at the stock price today, I think it reflects that. It's reflecting that one, they lost more money than expected. Two, uh, the company basically came to the market with a $500 million at the market uh, equity offering. We talk about share dilution all the time, and that's to be expected considering the company you know, still losing around $180 million, again, just give or take 10 or so million dollars uh, on a trailing basis. So it's still a loss-making enterprise. Uh, it is still essentially a company that's financed through equity offerings. Sales are growing, so that's there's no doubt there. But if you just look at the context of even the market capitalization as of the close yesterday, around $6.5 billion, and you annualize the quarterly sales of 11.7, so just roughly around $50 million in sales, it's trading at a much higher than 100 times price to sales multiple, and so that's expensive. That is expensive. I think that's a, that's a good point. And, and separately, they did announce this at the market share offering of up to $500 million to yeah. also they announced the acquisition of this, this Geneva-based ID company. So, I mean, they have been busy. Is that why we see such a high, high valuation now associated with this name? Well, I think you're seeing a lot of valuations in these names because everyone is looking for the next technology, uh, the next great leap in technology. I suggest it may be, you know, some integration of AI with robotics, but I also think quantum computing is probably going to be a technology we're going to hear a lot of in the next five or so years. I think the challenge right now is is trying to pick the companies that are going to be winners versus losers, uh, especially you know up and coming companies. And I'm not saying IMQ can't be competitive in the long run. It just happens to have gotten caught up in a, I call it more of a speculative bubble in the past, you know, you know six to six to, uh, to nine months. Mm -hmm. We're seeing retracements because we're seeing challenges, not just in these names, uh, which is to be expected because they're not profitable, but even some of the larger cap names. I mean, look at NVIDIA, look at Tesla, for instance. These are all names we're all well aware of. Uh, Tesla is down significantly. It's challenging this market. NVIDIA, it's been in a trading range in the last six months. So mm -hmm. we're basically seeing some of these high-flying speculative names, um, you know, retrace back as they should because mm -hmm. they're still trading at very lofty valuations considering their technology mm -hmm. and sales, which will probably grow in the future. It's just, it's just uh, how quick can they grow them and how much can they earn. Yeah, I think it's a good point, George. I mean, the hurdle now with all the technology and hardware you need to do this type of work, I just can't see it not being a mega cap company that is the breakthrough company. Appreciate it, George Tiller.